Hi everyone and welcome to the next video in our course Beginners Basics for FreeCAD 0.22 or what will be known as FreeCAD version 1. In this chapter we're going to look at a different type of strewed operation called the Revolve. Again going through the same process of how you would identify an object in the real world that would use such an operation and then go through a number of exercises. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash Mango Jelly Solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. From our lesson on identifying the strews, we learned the process of creating the profile of a subject, identifying the plane on which it can be sketched upon, and utilizing the strewed operation to add height or volume. While we typically perceive the strewed operations as adding material in a straight line, the term strewed originates from the process of forcing material through a die, where the die represents the profile of the desired shape. Let's shift our attention to the subjects on screen. As you can see, the orientation of the subjects are pointing directly up. If we apply the same principles as we did in the previous lessons and look from the views that start from the top, we notice one of the views, in this case, the top view, we don't encounter a complex silhouette, especially when we simplify the object. Instead, all the subjects exhibit the same silhouette shape, a circle. It's important to recall in our previous examples, all the profiles were of the same primitive shape when viewed from one of the perspectives, or what's known in 3D space, a plane. Again, when we view this from another viewpoint, in this case, the side, we notice we have a more complex profile or more complex silhouette. This observation highlights an important aspect. Taking cross sections from the side, for instance, from the left to the right, will produce multiple cross sections that are not identical. Similarly, if we were to slice from the top, Although all the cross sections would be circular in shape, they would vary in diameter. But if we switch back to the silhouette or the profile, we can see from the top, the profile is circular, which implies the profile remains consistent as we revolve around it from the center point. This can be demonstrated if we take the object and create cross sections through a quarter of that object, and then repeat it like slices through a cake around the object following its path. We see that the cross sections are identical, leading us to one single profile. By taking this profile and extruding it around the center point, we reconstruct our desired object. This operation is known as a revolve. The position of the profile in relation to the center is crucial. Facing the profile away from the center, as in this subject, will result in the void whereas aligning part of the profile with the axis around which it's to be revolved will close the section off. Create an object with no voids within. Whereas creating a profile such as this, where part of it is aligned with the axis and part of it is away from that center point, will result in an object that is close at the bottom and has a void within the inside. Let's have a look at the flowchart to identify objects that can be used with a revolve. So first we ignore any fillets or finishings. When we come to something that is a revolve, it's more of the finishings rather than the fillets or chamfers that we want to ignore. The fillets and chamfers we can include in the revolve. The first question is, are the cross sections through the object circular? Again, this can be identified by looking at the object from one of the planes. In this case, we was looking from the top plane. If this is the case, then we look at the side and front profiles. If we spin the object, they should look the same. And from there, we can do our revolve or groove. A revolve is an additive operation and the groove is a subtractive. It's important to note that when I identify subjects for revolves, then they don't necessarily have to be a full circle. They could be anything from one to 360 degrees. So when simplifying the object, it may be beneficial to think of the object as a full circle. 
The flexibility of being able to revolve at an angle has some crossover when identifying profiles and operations when you're creating your model. For instance, there's a crossover with the sweep. We'll discuss that in the upcoming chapters. Taking what we've learned into account with our previous exercise, then we would end up with something like this. A simple profile of a quarter of the cross section of the object. This profile will be then revolved 360 degrees, followed by a sketch to create the holes. So far we've done one operation. The final operation will be a pocket, and then our model is complete. This has vastly reduced the amount of operations we've applied to our model, simplifying it and increasing its stability. In our next video, we'll look at an exercise of applying a revolve in the part designed to create a simple object. Hope you're enjoying these videos, and I hope to see you in the next one. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero, or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.